Friends, let's turn together to Luke chapter 19 and hear the story of a man named Zacchaeus. As Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through, a man there by the name of Zacchaeus was chief tax collector and he was wealthy. And he wanted to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. And when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and he said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly and all the people saw this and they started to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So one of the first things we have to know about this passage to understand what's going on here with Zacchaeus and Jesus and the crowd is that in the ancient world, tax collectors made their money by exacting taxes beyond what the empire demanded. So in a lot of ways, Zacchaeus worked for the Roman government. He was partnering up with the enemy. He was asking an occupied people for the taxes that they owed to an empire that had taken them over. But when we're told that he's wealthy, what we're being told is that he's asking people for more money even than the Roman empire demands, and that that's how he is accruing his wealth. And we can tell that the people know it. Later in the story, we're told that they grumble about him, they call him a sinner, they think Jesus should not be meeting with him. And yet, this man who's in charge of a fair amount of wealth is curious about Jesus. He's curious enough about Jesus, wants to see him with his own eyes, that he braves going into a crowd he knows good and well doesn't like him. We're told in the text that he gets up in this tree because he's a short guy, that he can't see otherwise. But when we know the details about the story and what his relationship would be to the crowd, I can't help but wonder if the tree feels like a safer space, that being up there, away from the crowd, unseen by them, unable to engage with them, is a safer place for Zacchaeus, a comfortable place for him to be. As Jesus comes down the road, there is no hiding in a tree. Zacchaeus immediately is spotted by the Savior. Jesus looks straight up at him. And we're, we're told that Jesus says to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. We worship a God who does not let us stay in the trees of our own choosing, who wants to engage with us, but knows that we have to engage face to face and that whatever it is that's keeping us out of the crowds, out of the places where we know that we're gonna get critique, we worship a God who says, I'm down here in precisely that crowd. And if you wanna be with me, you're gonna have to climb down to do it. Jesus says something else interesting to Zacchaeus. He says, I, Jesus, have got to come to your house. It's a curious thing, right? We don't like to invite ourselves over for dinner. It's rude to do. And we imagine Jesus as the type of God normally who's inviting us into what Jesus is doing. But here, Jesus says, Zacchaeus, you've got to invite me over to your house. In Greek, the word is oikos. And you all in this week's readings have been studying the oikonomia, the economy of God. In Greek, the word economy comes from the very word oikos or house. 
And in the ancient world, we might think of the house, oikos, as being better translated household economy. The household was a site and a place where people were working together in community with the resources they had to provide for their basic needs, to produce goods that would make up the stuff of life, food, clothing, uh, utensils, materials. So people were working together in their households in a way that is a little foreign from what we understand today. And that's why these two words, house and economy are linked. And so Jesus says, get out of your tree and let me into your household economy. And Zacchaeus, bless his heart, immediately says yes. Immediately says yes. For all that he has done and the very little of it that we know to the folks in this crowd, he hears this call of Jesus and he bravely climbs down into the midst of those who would grumble about him and about the way that he's made his money. And as he gets down there with Jesus and with this crowd and he hears them saying, look at Jesus going to the house of the sinner, he stands up and he says to the Lord, here and now I give half my possessions to the poor. And if I've cheated anybody out of anything, I'll pay back four times the amount. This encounter with Jesus immediately calls Zacchaeus into a different kind of arrangement with his own wealth and his own resources. And Jesus says that today salvation has come to this oikos. Today, salvation has come to this household economy. As you all embark on this journey together of weeks of bringing yourself bravely and boldly out of whatever your home trees are, as you do the brave and bold work of stepping into whatever your crowds are, I think Zacchaeus is a model for what it means to jump in, for what it means to leave no part of your life untouched by God's call. And so I just leave you with these questions today. What is your tree and who's standing underneath it? When you look at the wealth that you have access to, that you manage or that you benefit from, where's that wealth coming from? On whose backs has it been? gathered? What might it mean to get down into the midst of those very people, knowing that Jesus is already there? What might it mean to invite God into our household economies? Good luck. <laughs>